Calvin Cambridge come to your town, you better watch out. Well, that was the final word from Gary the Glove Payton tonight after the Seattle Sonics battled it out with Cambridge in the Los Angeles Knights. Yeah, now you know what it feels like to be in the gloves, huh? It's more like a mitten, Gary. The Knights rallied around Cambridge after that, and before it was all over, Peyton got the gate. Get him out of here, Red. And Kenny, how about the... Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start training threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play the NBA. NBA 2K3. I've never met this man, but I would have paid $100 a game in the 90s to hear him mic'd up, unfiltered, chewing up opponents on the court as a nine-time All-NBA performer. Mostly, I would be paying to listen to his dissertation, dissecting opponents' game plans, half-court defenses, and confidence in whoever was guarding him. Gary Payton is a legend from Oakland, a Hall of Famer, an NBA champion, and by all accounts, one of the most entertaining people to ever play basketball. Man, when I was coming up, I used to watch these Sean Kemp highlight tapes on VCR tape. I know I'm kind of old, but the VCR, them VHS, as if we got any millenniums out here, you know? <laughs> but uh, I used to watch these Sean Kemp highlight tapes, and man, every time he used to catch a live, man, this guy used to throw it to him, and uh, man, I always wanted to catch a live from this guy, or just play with this guy, or play defense with this guy. And uh, he's a Hall of Famer too, man. We 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 grateful to have him here, and his name is Hall of Famer Gary Payton, the Glove, the Glove, the Glove. And we're joined by Gary Payton. She picked Oregon State because your mom picked. My mama State. picked Oregon State. Oh. Phil, you saw always talking about. Go to Kobe side. Nah, player, we ain't gonna get it back if we go over there, man. Let's go over here. My first question is: Is Gary going? Because if Gary's going, then I'm always going. Because we sit in the back, and I just I'm in tears, literally tears. I have yeah. a confession. What's yeah. that? Gary made a barbecue chicken, not me. Get out! Did you really? I used to tell my guys, no matter what Gary says. Don't talk back to him. <laughs> Let the sleeping dog lie. I used to talk about their mama, their daddy, <laughs> their sister. The glove. Who, who are the best trash talkers of your era, Grant? Uh, you know, I think early on when when you really could, I don't, I don't feel like they trash talk now as much, or they, they're not allowed to. I think the league has cleaned that up. But it, it was definitely Gary Payton. I mean, Gary Payton was... Uh, you know, I mean, I just, I remember our point guard when, you know, early on in my career, he, he didn't want to bring the ball up against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really kind of how I started bringing the ball up and playing point forward. Gary would talk to whoever, talk to refs, players, coaches on other teams, fans. fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. So he was the guy that, you know, I think was the ultimate. And I, it was a little personal. He got a little personal at times with folks. But I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's basketball. You're trying, like you say, you're trying to get an advantage. Yeah. You're trying to get over on somebody. And if you if you back down or you showed that you were scared, oh. then he had you. Chris. Just out of curiosity, what is the best, most messed up trash talk you ever heard on the court? It's gotta be KG. Uh, Gary Payton. It was my first year in the league. We're in Seattle, it's 12 o'clock. Noon games are horrible for like NBA dudes, especially veterans, because they don't want to wake up. <laughs> and so I was like, damn, dude, I'm going to go in early because all the vets is like, they don't like to wake up. They don't get loose till like three o'clock. And so I checked in the game with, like two minutes after the game had started and I was guarding Gary Payton and um, and he got he got. Somebody got fouled. He passed the ball in the post, somebody got fouled. And then, like, we're just standing right here, and the dude's shooting the free throw. And the Seattle dude, like, come on, Seattle, wake up, Supersonics, let's go. And it's nobody in the arena, dude. <laughs> He's like, come on, guys, get fired up. We can take control. And Gary Payne said, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Now sit down. <laughs> like this is all going on while somebody's shooting the free throw. And the dude's like, let's go. <laughs> so that was like the worst. That was the worst I've ever seen. Like, because I was I was scared. I was like, damn, dude. You can just talk to the fans. <laughs> 
he was like not having it. Gary Payton did not have his coffee that morning, and the dude was like had too much energy. He was like, sit your ass down. <laughs> that haunted me the whole game. I was like, damn, man. Hey, I want to bring up a story for me and D Miles when we went, we went to we went to GP charity game. This was, that was after our rookie year, right? Yeah, I thought After it was our good. first year in the league, you know, GP, we always had love from him. We first played. I remember when we first played. Same situation, preseason. He talking about MJ didn't play. He played. Remember when he got to it with Key? With Keon. I'm yeah. sitting here like, yo, he going off. <laughs> Alvin Gentry, like, after he had settled about, he came back to the Al Alvin Gentry sitting at the table. We, at GP sitting there like that. Alvin, what, what you sending him up there for, Alvin? He yelling it like, while they on the free throw line, it's loud. I'm like, oh, man, GP. I'm like, why he on key like that? Like, what? <laughs> so, but no, this is a story. We went to the, we went to your game. This is when, this, this go back to when Pat, Big Pat, OG Pat Ewing was with the, with the Sonic. I never forget, that's my OG. So, we go out there. Of course, GP like, look, when we get there, he like, y'all the young boys, y'all the show. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all go out there in the layup line, do dunk. We put on dunk contests, dunk, all that. But the best part of the story, I don't know if you even know this, the best part of the story, you fast forward how many years later, Nate Robinson gets drafted. We we I get traded to the to the Knicks, and he was in that trade. So we have our press conference together. Phoenix drafted him and traded me and him together. So we had a we 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 sitting there. He couldn't he you know how everybody know how Nate is. He couldn't even sign his contract before he won. He had to tell me the story. He was sitting there like, big bro, I gotta tell you, like, man, I met you before. I'm like, for real? He like, man, you and D Miles, like I got your I got D Miles jersey in my in my in my living room. So he and him and his brother, they stole a car. <laughs> Literally. They were like 14, 15. He tells me they stole a car, drove to Key Arena. I don't know how they got in, got in, made it all the way to the floor, and literally, we went and played in Seattle later that, that year with the, with the Knicks. D Miles signed, me and D Miles had signed the charity game jersey. It's up in, you know, we in the hood in Seattle. In the hood, it is my CD, Creek. the CD. And, and he got the jersey up in there and everything, and he like, bro, like, we literally was there, like, like at the game. And that go all the way back. That was that was 2001. About 2001, yeah. Wow. You know I was having them big parties during that time. That's Definitely know that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why he had us doing all of the stuff. But we yeah, weren't yeah, there, yeah. though, because we weren't old enough drunk. to get in back then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let nobody know. We weren't there because we weren't yeah, old enough yeah, to get yeah, in yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, it's all good. I had y'all right. <laughs> hey, but this, this is what I want to talk about. Everybody know, like, people ask me, like, who was the, who was the best at Taco Track? Easy, easy, bar none of you. Like, I want to know, like, where did that come from? Like, to, to like you crazy you talking to MJ you a you a rook you talking to you talking to him like yeah like where did that type of mentality the who was the first player to bust your ass like kill you Gary Payton Ooh. Gary Payton Uncle it G. was uh it was seven minutes seven eight minutes of a ass whooping he was giving me it was just one of those things where. He had, what, 17? <laughs> All on me in that first five minutes. Like, it was the first <laughs> time in my career, like, the first, and like, especially early career, you know, when you early, you, you dominate high school, college. Shit. No, no, he wasn't saying nothing. That was a problem. <laughs> that was, that was, was a problem. Scary, he, was just scoring. he was just scoring, so it was like, I got subbed out, I ran off the course so damn fast. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Man, no, that motherfucker nice. Like, I'm, like, it was one of those things, I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to go in with him. And then he got subbed out, and some, Weber came in. I don't know who he is, but I can I, I can go against him. Yeah. Coach, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those. At halftime, like when uh, when I got back in, he was like, "You lucky I ain't the AI type." Of I would have scored fifty against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right, you right. I ain't gonna lie. You was, <laughs> you what was, he, was, he was posting you up. Everything. Like, it was like drive, like driving, roll. posting. We Pull switch, up. yeah, we a switch. He got the big man on him. He posts him up. That's when I knew <laughs> I was in trouble. Like he got Eric, like Eric Dampier switched on him. He backed, backed him up, spent, faked it. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> it's, it's not serious. just me. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this ain't, this ain't the NBA I'm ready for. <laughs> yeah, I, I would get the, get the opportunity to play against GP. GP was like, and then as soon as we played against him, he instantly started talking. It was like, man, I remember watching this on, on like when I was little, like watching him talk shit and 
do his thing. So when we played against him, he was talking shit. It like got me hyped yeah, yeah, yeah. to like play against him and go even harder. See, I think I, I think his soon as I got on the court, like when I when we started, we got the ball and he did that little smirk. <laughs> <laughs> It threw me head. off already. Oh shit! I, like I just picked the ball up. Like I'm not even near the dude. I just picked it up and threw it. Like ah, I guess he already <laughs> realized. Okay, he done. Like, <laughs> so he I, I didn't scare him, so he ain't need to talk nothing. <laughs> teammate, you had a bunch of teammates, like a bunch of All Star teammates, Hall of Fame teammates. What teammate that you took something from that stuck with you for your career? Uh, Gary Payton as well taught me how to get through screens on the ball. You know, so I think you know, oh, those two geez. tactical things. Yeah, because it, like, you know, getting hit with ball screens is like the worst feeling for a guard when you're guarding the ball. And so he taught me how to move up into the ball handler, make yourself thin, and then slide through the screen. Yeah. So those are the two things that I take with me. Do you think um, I, uh, I, I had some really good mentors, man. Like, you know, information wasn't, guys wouldn't share information um, generally. Um, but if you ask, they just may especially if they know you're cut from the same cloth mm. like gp i asked gp gp i mean he went on and on and on he loves and we were playing yeah. we may face them in the playoffs when he was yeah. in seattle right but he was still sharing information because of the respect factor of furthering the game that's always there remember the year we watched the uh, dunk contest yeah yeah ball heads, right? the same year see well is when gary payton Talk, monk, talk, cold. Yeah, like, right. yeah, you remember yeah. That? I remember that. Remember that? They, they was in the corner. At the same man, was, man and, and, nobody and, saw and, that. And Cole went to him. Cole though. was like, man, let me see. Uh, did, did, yeah, did, I did, did, do he that. Down, bro. Come here, let me show you something. Yeah. And he showed him. I was like, yeah. oh, I, man, let me get some of this too. Hold yeah, on, what y'all know exactly. what talking about? Yeah, let me right, just me, listen uh, in. Okay, no okay, that's what you're talking about? Okay. I'm going to see where on how knowledge is not passed on. And, you know, certain individuals have are secure enough to teach and it just made me think of 99 when we was in, uh, or 2000, 99 when we was in um, uh, Oakland. i never forget this. When you pulled Cole to the side, he asked you a question about defense, and you just took him through the whole kit. You showed him everything. I remember I inched over there and got some of the lesson. I wanted to ask you, why'd you do that? And then second part, have you done that since? You know what, okay, KG, that's a good question because I, I hate these kids nowadays because they think they know so much. You know what I'm saying? They don't respect the OGs. Mm. The OGs who know what's going yeah. on. You can get knowledge from us and we'll we'll teach it to you. Kobe was a different kid, man. Absolutely. He he wanted to get better. So Shot the mum out there, boy. Always, always. And what he did was he asked me. He just came to me and he said, I heard you know what? Like I want to be a, a good defensive Defender. player like you. And what should I do? And we went through it. We went through it. Oh, and right they didn't there. have no shame about why people watching us while we doing it. Because some dudes would be like, man, no, 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 show me a little later. And he did it. And that's what he wanted to do. With it. I think, too, from, from playing with, with some young guys last year, having a perspective and understanding them, young guys don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. Young guys see, see Gary Payton, see Tim Duncan. They see them in the awe. Bro, you got to understand, you're a lot of people. And you're a lot of people to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And with that comes respect. And with that, I don't know how to come up to you if I'm a young guy who don't know you from a can of paint. No, Gary Payton, super real. If he ain't feeling me, he'll tell me, get the hell on, right? Bruh, I don't have that in me to come up to you, so I don't know how to communicate that to you. I don't think these kids got egos. I just don't think these kids know how to conversate, if not relay, communicate that I need help. You know what? It's hey, come at us, man. <laughs> we good, man. We real. I ain't got no problems with it. No. Why holler at me? You know so I had great guidance. You just yeah. absorbing it. Man. The most hostile and angry trash talker ever is Gary Payton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He comes from Oakland, where, where I'm from as well. And so we're cousins. You know how this works, Detroit in the Bay Area type of thing. Going to KMEL Summer Jams in the early 90s, standing on stage with Hammer. My guy, Too Short. What up, though, Mark Curry? Those are my peoples. Um, how about being 18 years old and Gary Payton, you laying in the city at two in the morning and he tell you, hey, Pert, I need a bottle of Patron. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, hey, get, hey, GP, man, I'm, I'm 18 years old, man. I don't even know if they gonna let me, you know, well, I'm gonna find some liquor at the liquor store closed. Mm -hmm. What can I find liquor at? Oh, you better go to the club. So I got to come out of $500 to no. get in the club because I'm 18. 
Right? So some, they, they hesitated to even let me in. And you didn't tell them, like, I'm from the Celtics? Like, you, it, you didn't want to say anything? I was so irrelevant. Nobody, unless, I wasn't playing. Like, if you wasn't, a, like, it's so, a okay. Sad story. Not, not on top of that, that's to get in. Now I got to go talk to the owner, and I got to spend $1,000 just to get a bottle of Patron for him to let me leave out the club with to bring the Gary Payton. Okay, so then when I go knock on the door and say, here, Gary, here go your bottle of Patron and also your iron clothes that you left out, that, your dicky suit that you sent to my room, <laughs> yeah. and you call downstairs to check to see if I sent it down there to be pressed yeah. to make sure I ironed it. Yeah. What? Hey, appreciate you, young fella, and slam the door in my right. face. So, okay, he made, you do, he made you do all of that. Can right? you match that? No, I can't match that. That's, that's crazy. He made you do all that. Hold on, there's one bit of good news. At least you were doing it for Gary Payton. He was doing it for Kendall Gill. Well, yeah. 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 There's love. Right. There's love. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. Percy. The other problem He's was. Sweet. He's sweet. But the other problem was everybody was saying, damn, this guy, per this, this kid, Percy, he's out at the clubs at night. Yeah. He's yeah. getting it at 2 in the morning. So that, that, that 1500 you spent getting that bottle, right? How much did you get in Gary Payton's per diem over the year, though? Tell that story. What you mean? How much did he give you when, when you get on? When we get on the plane, we get those per diem. He didn't give me nothing. He didn't give you one dollar. No. You said right here in this camera, Gary Payton didn't I give you go, a quarter. I go get my phone right now and put GP on speakerphone. He'll tell you he ain't give me a dollar. <laughs> wow. Oh well, I, that ain't right. Why did he need a bottle of Patrona at 2 a.m.? <laughs> because he needed it, man. <laughs> hey, 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 Joel, uh, man, I'm copping the plea, man. I don't uh, know what hey, Big Perk talking about, hey, man. You're hey, a good dude, hey, man. I don't ask no questions, oh, man. GP man. was GP. Someone had to ask it. Uh, we always start this off. Uh, that's a good, this is a good one for him. I want to hear this. Yeah, we always start this off by asking, who was the first person when you got to the league to bust your ass? <laughs> Y'all know that motherfucker, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was. Bush, you know, I, I didn't know it was him. <laughs> Straight Bud. I want to hear the story. Bush. Yeah, I was talking shit to him in uh, preseason. You know, I didn't know that they don't play in preseason. Right. So I'm killing him. Had about 21. He played about seven, eight minutes. Then all of a sudden, we got to play him in the first game of the regular season. <laughs> he come to Seattle. First thing he get on the floor, he was like, Pip, Armstrong. The young young fella, my, he mine all night. Let me bust his ass all night. And he's like, this ain't preseason. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> man, he remembered it, man. And then all of a sudden, man, I get quick two fouls, man, with four with, in four minutes, man. I sit down, man. I'm over there, 35, 7, 10. I'm over there with no chewing point, that gum, chewing huh? that gum, looking at me like uh, after the game, he's like, welcome to the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is still action going on in Atlanta in Area 21, uh, where Kevin Garnett. Still, well, man, no one G knows that. GP, is. thank you, Gary GP. Payton. Thank well, you, hey, GP. Man, I can't think about Gary, Gary, Gary Payton is one of my favorite players all time. I love you, GP. Sorry, we're not there to see you in person. I know I'm missing y'all. So what's gonna? <laughs> I just want to know with with uh, two of the world's biggest most trash talkers, trash talkers in the world. There's a cuss button, obviously. But what is going to be going on at Area 21 tonight, man? Hey, it is cracking in hey, here tonight. Hey, hey Kenny, we're going to be doing. <laughs> 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 I hear you, man. You understand me? We you understand me, we Gary? Hey, you know what? We because me, baby. these are two guys that, you know, when the NBA we used to say, wear the mic? that the NBA could not let yeah, them wear a mic do an NBA <laughs> basketball game. Hey, 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 Kenny, listen. I played with GP in Miami. When that boy get mad, that boy try to tear up the whole But the, You know what the funny thing, <laughs> hey, Gary? That boy try to tear you know up what the, the whole He tried to fight thing? everybody. He tried to fight me one day. No, this is, hey, hey, Come Shaq, on now. this is what I was going to say. The most interesting thing, we played Seattle like two or three times in, in playoff series. He talked more trash to his own teammates then he, yeah, did. he did. No, no, he did. Him, no, he did. Saying, he did. I had never seen he anything did. like that. <laughs> How about, can't, he can't oh, guard man. me. Give me the ball more. I, I, I never oh, seen anything God. like that. Hey, Gary, you know there's only a, a, a quick hour show, so you got to speed your answers up in the future. Hey, oh, hey Shaq. Hey, 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 Shaq. Hey,
Chief Shaq, Chief. Shaq, no, yeah, I'm listening. Shaq, right, go listen. Ahead. Go ahead, GP. Listen. Go over there and slap him upside his head <laughs> okay. and tell right. him he ain't talking to me. <laughs> I right. take my time and I give yeah. examples the way I want to. You right, Chuck, me. sit over there hey. and eat you a Twinkie yeah. and be cool. Hey, hey, if KG. he put his hands on me, it's going to be some furniture yeah. moving. Yeah. KG, let me. Love the glove. Hall of Famer. 11 time All Star, Hall of Famer, NBA <laughs> champion. You got a lot of stuff on your dress. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of stuff on your You're resume. You're from Oakland, man, with all that on your resume. You're a champ. I didn't ever think about it. I'm a champ. You're a champ. Yeah, I'm 126. Yeah, 126. You guys, you guys together. Yeah. yeah. What do you remember most about that year? Carrying him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. You know what, Ernie? I wasn't even supposed to go in there and play a lot. I only came because of, because of Shaq. And um, then um, White Chocolate went down. Yeah. And then I started playing. And we was bad at first. And then I made it after Dallas, after a Dallas game, I, I put everybody in and I said, well, look here, we were playing for ourselves. We ain't playing for none of these other guys. And I told Shaq to take control because he had the most voice. And he started taking control and stepping up of people and, and talking to Pat the way he should talk to him and tell Pat to calm down and let us play. And when we played, we became a, a group. We became brothers. And then <laughs> that after that, we won like 18 in a row. <laughs> and then we that. was good. We was good. But he was our he was our rock. And you know, I, I was the oldest guy on the team, but he was our rock. And I just kept everybody together. I just made sure that we didn't get out of pocket. You know, everybody on the team, we all went out all the time. We just had fun. Mm -hmm. You know, we was one of them groups that we was together and off the court we were together and it made us better on so, the court. So let me ask you a question. Why Oregon State? You know, um, Chuck, I, I, I chose St. John's University. Okay. I committed to St. John's University. Oh, that and, was you in New York. Yeah, and then uh, Louis kind of second called right the day that you're going to. You know, we had a press conference and stuff in, in our gym, and he called and said he didn't want to take he didn't want to take me because it would have upset a lot of guys in the East. Wow. And, and I was the first time he had recruited past the Mississippi, and so he took another guy. And wow. I was wow. so. I don't think nobody. You told this story before. Yeah, second. I took it. And then what? I, you know, and, and to this day, he always say he's sorry. And then the, the, their coach was uh, Rutledge. Ron Rutledge. Ron Rutledge. He yeah. was the one who recruited me. Yeah. And he said, you're making a mistake. You're making a mistake on this kid. And I was so upset, Chuck, that I went home and everybody found out that I didn't sign with St. John's. Mm -hmm. And all the scholarships start coming back. And then my mom, I told my mom, I just said, Mom, look, I, I'm not making the right decision. So won't you do it? And she picked she picked Oregon State because your of, mom picked my Oregon mama State? picked Oregon State. She she I told her whatever envelope she comes with with whatever scholarship that I was gonna sign it. And um, when she did it and we did the press conference, I opened it up and it was Oregon State. How did you know Oregon there was State. a good story? Uh, yeah. in that. You're doing, so you're doing a press I, I didn't conference know that. and said I, I'm gonna I'm going to. Um, yeah, and I opened it up and yeah. I'm going to Oregon, Oregon State. State. I'm going to Oregon <laughs> State, and then Oregon State coach uh, Coach Anderson came out and. It, it was a good fit for me. It was a great fit for me. Wow. It, well, look, great you, let me you also put them say on the that, map. Yeah, yeah, let me also say we've, we've always appreciated your support of the University of Georgia as well, <laughs> um, especially against Oklahoma. I'm going Monday. there Monday. Are you? I'm going to the Rose Bowl Monday. Georgia. Confession. What's yeah. that? Gary made a barbecue chicken, not me. Get out. Did yeah. you really? Is this Gary another story? Is that another heard barbecue before? chicken? Yeah. is not Shaq going to give up all our little yeah. secrets. Yeah. And that's your yeah. barbecue chicken. Now, Gary always used to look for me. Like Phil always used to say, swing the ball. Gary's like, nope, I'm throwing to Shaq. So every now and then I like to, you know, show my Akeem Olajuwon and you go to my fadeaway. And Gary be like, no, man, barbecue chicken. Eat his ass like some barbecue chicken. <laughs> Don't shoot another oh, fadeaway. Don't, Don't shoot, shoot another secrets, fadeaway. Man. So that's a, that's a true yes. story. Yeah. It's a true story because oh, yeah. I used to always yeah. tell him, I was like, man, you got barbecue chicken up in there. Man. Eat him up. <laughs> Go in there and get the ball, man, because uh, you know Phil used to always talk yeah. about. Go to Kobe side. Nah, player, we ain't gonna get it back if we go over there, man. Let's go over here. He get double, kick it back out, man. We good. Or we got barbecue chicken in there. So that's how it was. Hey, what's barbecue. what's the best? Because you know everybody knows what kind of player you were, Gary, and a great defender. And and but you you also talked. And he's so so barbecue chicken is attributed to you. What do you think when Shaq and the fool he yeah, made up to? When people no. when people are telling stories about, oh, I remember when I played Gary Payton, and he said. This. What's your? What was your best line? What was your best smack Ooh, talking? You can't repeat what Ernie, I can't repeat what yeah. I used to say. Yeah. I used to get on everybody. We used to talking about it with Chuck. Chuck didn't know that I used to talk about their mama, their daddy, <laughs> their sister, their brother. I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? It was just yeah. on the court. You know, it wasn't personal. 
You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what their mom or whatever was doing. So like today, it's real soft. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Somebody would have said something about my wife that they did something with her. I did it with yours too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I did it with yours too. So, you know, we was there last night with him. Well, what was that? Where you was at? Why well, you was with your homeboys. You know what I'm saying? They got to come back at them. Yeah. You know, you can't get sensitive in this. In this oh, you were deep. You cutting deep. Oh, I'm cutting true. them deep. Oh, oh, I'm cutting, cutting them deep. deep. They, they you know what I asked? Deep. It was funny. I remember because. A lot of people want to, like now, the NBA, they'll ask you, do you want to go on these trips? And you kind of be ambassadors. And I'm always, my first question is, is Gary going? <laughs> because if Gary's going, then I'm always going. Because we sit in the back, and I just, I'm in tears, literally tears. <laughs> but I asked him one time, I said, Gary, you never really talk trash to me, man. Like, I was waiting for it. He's like, oh, you ain't, you ain't really get into that. So I just went to Vernon. Like, you wasn't even getting into yeah. it. So you were just, I was like, oh, my God. Did you ever talk trash to, uh, to Jet? No, no, no. Kenny wasn't really that type of guy. You'll know what type of guy you want to go at, and then Kenny don't go at you like that. And then I, you know, I, I'll talk to Chuck because, you know, he verbal. You know what I mean? He try to punk a lot, a lot. <laughs> Stop, man. Yeah. He, he, he be like to punk a lot of my guys, and I used to have to run up on him and, and do that. So, but Kenny wasn't the dude. I wanted Vernon more. I yeah. wanted to oh, him that, and Vernon. Man. <laughs> yeah, I wanted Vernon. He couldn't, have, man. Come on. Leave that alone. Leave that alone, <laughs> man. He brought him and, but the crazy thing, him and Vernon would go so hard at it, and then right after the game, they meet yeah, at the same yeah. place, yeah. restaurant to eat, and we'd be right together. What do you think that? What do you think that the trash talk does? Did it help you, or you think it discouraged the opponent more? Which one? Did it help That's you more, it helped me, or it discouraged helped, the opponent more? It helped me and discouraged the opponent. Which one more? More helped me more. It helped you. Because that's what I was about. I was about getting on the floor. That was my whole thing coming into the game is to talk trash. And some days I didn't go in there, Kenny, having it all. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to play sometime. And when that trash started mm -hmm. coming out, it made my competitiveness come out. Okay. And when I started going at it, and then when the players started getting used to me and they was like, man, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him because he's going to get it going. Right. And the coaches do it. Then I would go pick the referee or I'd go pick somebody in the stands. And then, you know, them fans, they always want to get at it. Right. So, yeah, it's, it, 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 I'm going to go at you. Were there, were there guys who hey. would not get involved with, with who, who just – They'd hear you, and they just everybody. Was, and it was everybody like, at the wild, Ernie. Did nobody go at me? You, you know what's nobody. No, no, but, but that you couldn't get under their skin. Were there John guys? John Stockton. John Stockton. Really? Could never. Shaq, I always got at you, man, because no, you, you always be talking about. <laughs> Shaq, you always be talking about. I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna break your back, throw that high ox thing. But this guy right here, he was the one. He always mm -hmm. just stayed away from me. He didn't say a thing to me, and it got to me so much because what he did was is. He just didn't pay attention to me. And I said, what am I doing? And then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, he'll tell me, he'll take a charge, he'll get me on the bench, and then he'll just look at me and nod. You know, uh, you know what's interesting, Ernie? What? We're taping this. A great example last night, Russell Westbrook couldn't get it going. And he gets into a shoving match. Uh, with, with the center. With the center. Uh, well, no, 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 Valachunas. Valachunas, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Ernie, it was one of the most amazing things I've seen. From that point on, Russell went ballistic. They went from down 10 to up 16. <laughs> it was crazy. And, and we used to, I, I used to tell my guys before the game, no matter what Gary says, don't talk back to him. <laughs> Because Kenny, we do not want, we let the, we, that's say you heard, let the sleeping dog lie. Let him lie. <laughs> yes. And Kenny, we played together twice, and that's the only way I could communicate with Gary. Like, like, like Gary and myself, we don't respect nice talk. Like, we used to get in, in each other's face like we was going to fight. But, you know, people didn't know that that's mm -hmm. what got him going. Like, you know, I'd be talking, well, I was the only one that could really talk to him like that. Everybody, <laughs> hey, don't you feel like Gary, relax. So, I mean, but that's the only way I get him going, just by getting in his face and yelling at him. Yeah, he, he brought the only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that wait, wasn't going to work everybody else. That, yeah. uh, that is about a wrap for, a wrap. <laughs> for Outside the, the stuff, NBA yeah. on Facebook. TP, always a pleasure. You're always right. a pleasure. Happy, Happy New Year, too. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Glove. Happy, Happy, Happy New Year. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Why you leave that alone? Man, man. Man. Let let it leave you be alone. Well, I love you, you. <laughs> <laughs>
first two years, I, 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 like I said, I tell you, everybody would tell you uh, they didn't even they thought I was going to be a bust, you know, really? being a second pick. Yeah, because I wasn't playing the way I was supposed to play. You know, Seattle tried to trade me. Uh, they were going to trade me and Sean Kemp, and then all of a sudden, um, in your first sure, two years, yeah, and then they 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 they, they pulled us in the office and they asked both of us what we needed, and we told them, you know, we needed a change and and we needed to play the way we wanted to play, and they went and got George Carl, and then George Carl changed our whole whole basketball game, and then it took off from there. Then look what happened. Then the Seattle SuperSonics became who they were. So it really, the coach really makes that much of a difference? It does make a difference because it gives you more confidence in yourself. Uh, uh, coach Carl, first thing he did when he came in, he said, this is what they brought me in here for us, you two guys. And we have to, we're going to start with you two guys. If I can't change you around, then we're going to have to get rid of you. That's what he told us. And then uh, he talked to me and, and he said, uh, you know, what do you need? I said, sure, I just need to be back to where I played when I, when I came out of Oregon State. And he said, well, I got something that's going to get you like that. And uh, he went and got Coach Tim Gergerich. Uh, you was a coach at, at uh, UNLV with uh, Tarkanian. Oh, okay. With Tarkanian. Under, uh, with under Tar Larry, Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson, them, them the teams. Yeah, teams. Yeah, uh, you know, Stacey Augman, all, all right, of them yes, guys. Of yeah, yeah. You know, they had made a big run. They had won a championship. And then they got in trouble. And then they got fired. So then he went and brought him in. And first thing, Coach Gerd came and he told us that we're going to have to come back and, and go to the summer league. In our third year, we had to go back to summer league and start playing basketball. And then he took me into a, uh, a hotel room and said, hey, let's watch film. And first film he put on is when I was playing at Oregon State. He said, this is a kid I like, and this is the kid I try to get after your freshman year because they try to recruit me after the freshman year to leave Oregon State to come to UNLV because okay. they wanted a point guard. And then Greg Anthony transferred and went there. UNLV, so, yeah, right. because I didn't choose to go. So it was one of them things where he said, we're going to get you back to that. If that's what you want to do, so what you're going to have to work all summer. And then I went into summer league in Utah when it was in Utah at the time. And me and Sean averaged about 27 apiece. And, and all of a sudden, it took off. It just started taking off. You mentioned that George Carl instilled some confidence in you. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that was you know, generous with his compliments. And, you know, and I know, and you come from an older school where it was a lot of tough love was how you, how you guys were taught or whatever. Was he the dude that yeah. he boosted the guy up? He was in, he was in you, you know, he was in you, he was in you. Let me, that, I feel say, like that means say, it gets on yeah, you though. Yeah, he, he, got, he, got, he gets on you, you know what I'm saying? But he says things that get you upset. That's the way it goes, he gets you upset, but during them times, coaches can say anything to us and we wouldn't have to take it personal. What I would do is I would try to upstage him. I'll try to make him look like a fool because he's talking bad to me. And then when I do something special and make him win, I'll look at him and he'll just he'll, he'll just smile. And then he'll just leave it alone and turn around and walk away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then that's when the relationship got to a point where it was just like he didn't say anything to me. He was like, just run, in, run any play you want to run. In your day, did you ever like change a jersey or change a pair of kicks just because your shot wasn't falling? Nah, that your, your, your wear don't that don't that don't do nothing. The wear well, you because the athletes, game. you guys are so superstitious. You have like these like little things, you know. You I don't know. have no superstition. I didn't ever do anything the same way. I just went in there. Only thing I did the same way is I took a, a hot tub before. Before the and game. Before the game, I sat in there, and then I always ate McDonald's before I did it. What? It doesn't care because yeah. I wanted to get full. You know, I just wanted to make, make myself full and make myself ready. That's it. But about games, if I'm going in there having a bad game, I think the bad game is on me. I got to change my mentality, and I got to get aggressive, more aggressive with a lot of things. If my jump shot wasn't on, I'll go to the bucket more. That's what I started having my mentality to say, go to the bucket and get to the line. It's not happening tonight. And then everything starts to open up when you get to the free throw line Get free free throws, but a lot of people have different superstitions. My young buddy, uh, uh, Jason Terry, when he first got in the league, he he always idolized me, and he kept uh, a picture of me in his sock. Really? That's just the thing that in, happens. In like the Atlanta days? Yeah, when yeah, yeah, when he first got to the league. So that was just the way things happened. Then he kept the shoes that I gave him because I was going to sign with St. Uh, um, John's University coming out of college. And he was a young boy, and I gave him my shoes, the ones that I had from long, from a long time. And then I gave it to him, and because he went to Arizona, Arizona University, and they were red. So 
he wore them and did he warm in, in the first game in, in his league. So, you know, guys got different superstitions, but I didn't ever have one. I never. Gary, can you put me in the car um, when you would drive up to the drive through at McDonald's and what were you? <laughs> And I just want to know what you ordered uh, uh, before you played a game and you gave a team 25 and 10. Well, when I when I first started going, they didn't know who I was. And then all of a sudden, when they knew games were, and, and then I'll go through the drive-through, and they would recognize my voice. And they said, oh, Mr. Payton, okay, you want the Big Mac with fries <laughs> and, a, and a strawberry shake and, and some and, and some McNuggets. I said, yep. And then it'll be right there, and then I'll pay for it, and I'll go through. Because uh, McDonald's was right by the arena. It's right around the corner from the arena. Like, the Space Center was right there, and then McDonald's was right here. And then I'll go in there. I'll go to my locker, I'll put it right there, and I'll go sit it by the uh, by the hot tub. They'll have all the hot but tubs. But you have to eat McDonald's like right away, bro, because the fries will get soggy and they'll get right. Cold. The fries will, your fries will get soggy, but you know I'm right there. I'm two minutes away. You know what I'm saying? You wrap the bag up real tight so the heat can stay in there. You you, you got to understand that, right? You got to wrap the bag up real real tight, and then you can get there in five minutes, and they're still good. They're, they're still be good. They're I still be good. can't believe that of like you played at the highest level in your sport and you were eat, crushing McDonald's before games. Every game, man. I used to eat McDonald's on a regular, man. That's all I used to do. And then in breakfast. How are you not 300 pounds right now? Can't do it. Can't do it. I, you know, I can't be 300. Don't look right. <laughs> 300 don't look right. You look like don't look me, right. bro. I feel like you were crushing. It's, I mean, you probably can't eat McDonald's like you used to. No, no. I can't eat it like 3, that. 3,000 calories a game or 4,000 calories a game. But you know I do. You know I do. Once a, once a month, I get a cheat date. I go to McDonald's. And you know I crush it. <laughs> I, you, I crush it. I get, I get a Big Mac. 10 piece nugget, large fry, and a big strawberry shake. Now? Yeah. Like these days? Yeah, it once a month. I do it once a month. And then you run a, a th uh, like a 10 miles to yeah, burn yeah. it off? No, and then I, I lay down for a little bit. And then at the end, no, you can't go to sleep. I got, I got to. That's a, that's a good one. That's a no. good one. They always say heartburn and all that crap. That don't work. You got to get up, and then when you get up, then you go ride a bike or you do something or you go. See what I do is I go take my dog, and I run my dog. <laughs> So I got, I got a big Corso cane. I run the dog down the street. <laughs> and then it all comes out. <laughs> it all comes out. It's going to be a long run, bro. Yeah, it, it comes out. a lot out. of food. But yeah, you, but you know, you don't really eat it all. You know, you probably eat half of the half of the quarter pounder with cheese, half of the fries, and and half of the uh, half of the nuggets. It's a good taste. It's just a it's a taste bud for me. That's all. But I, I kill a, I kill a milkshake. I kill a milkshake. <laughs> milkshake is me. I, I gotta drink the milkshake. But you know that's bad. I, I'm telling you all of this, and then my doctor probably sitting over there. And he see this. He'd be like, I did not tell you not to eat all of that. <laughs> you know that's bad for me. I feel you. Um, I was talking to uh, Terrence Ross uh, recently. And he was training once at UCLA, and LeBron like rented out the gym. So they were they were shooting there, and then one week they just couldn't go because like LeBron rented out the gym, and Kobe was a guy that you had he had to invite you to come work right. out with him in the summertime. In your era, what were those summertime runs like? I heard that Michael Magic. Michael had a few. Magic was ours. Magic was ours at UCLA. We used to go up in there and get a lot of runs at UCLA. He used to run the gym. Everybody used to come in there. He used to have different people come in there, and we just get a competitive run. We didn't do it often, you know, but we did it. You know, so I, I went up there. What were the those summer. runs like? Great, great runs, man. I mean, we used to all be competitive, but Magic used to try to run it. Every time he called a foul, it used to be his way like he was God or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we used to always get into it. I'd be like, look here, man. I ain't coming up in here for this. Let's just play basketball and run. You know what I'm saying? So, so no so, fouls are called. Yeah, we didn't need all that foul stuff, man. Unless it was a hard, hard foul, which we played like that anyway. You know, if you play like that, just play. We'll go through it. But don't be when it's on game time and you want to foul five times because so you want to win, man. We won. You know what I'm saying? We made a bucket. So, but it was good run. Everybody was there during, during the Magic era. Yeah. Speaking of uh, competitiveness, I, I come from like a video game era and we used to play like got your characters in video games on Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo, more specifically the NBA Jam uh, Tournament Edition. Do you have any of the arcade games? Since, since you were in the game, did they send an oh, arcade yeah, game Oh, yeah, you know that they used to, they're on fire, you know, the big heads and stuff. 
yeah, you know, yes, I got yes. that. Me and Sean Kemp was was the was a man at NBA Jam. That's what everybody used to play with, and then sub Dentley Ford and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got two machines. You know, I'm a big arcade uh, geek. I I do the big machines. I don't do this PlayStation stuff no more. I got the real actual arcades. I got um at both of my houses. I got all the arcades in there where it goes. I made my garage a big arcade in California. Oh, sick. so yeah, we can open up the garage during a, a nice um, summer day, have all the music, TVs all in there, all the games, turn them on, and everybody come in there. We have a poker table in the middle. We do all kind of stuff. And then we got tables, a Seattle table, a Laker table, a Boston table. Like so the poker tables have the, the, the logos? The, the and logos oh, and oh, stuff right. all on it with the chairs and the, the, the chairs, and we all sit there, have beer. You know, I had a the tap beer thing that comes through the thing. I, I, you know, I got it all, man. I got it all, man. So it's like, it's real cool. It's real, real cool. See, that's a time where I would love to hear. I would pay $100 just to hear you, just you, for like that night, whether it's three hours or four hours, just telling stories. You have a good night doing that night because I talk crazy doing that. All my boys come over there, we start getting a little, little drunk, and I talk crazy. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 they don't be wanting to handle it. And then we be playing a lot of cards, Uno. We do Uno now. Really? Uno is the game right now. Yeah, I haven't played Uno since I was maybe like 10. I don't yeah. even know if I remember. When I, I played play. that, we, we got Thursday nights now. Uno Thursday nights. At your place? At my place. That's what we all do. Yeah, it'd be, it be nice. It's nice. This is, the, uh, yeah, this is, um, <laughs> how does someone get an invite, bro? I know <laughs> you, we're in we're all, you gotta do is come, all you got to do is come to Cali, man. Come to Cali, man. Come to the United States. Hit me up. Hey, you can do to. Uno any Listen, night. I will bring the McDonald's. Bring will, it all. I will bring some some adult beverages yeah. just to make everything nice and smooth. Yeah. And then we'll leave the phones at the door and then just enjoy like That's story. what we like.